By the way, you don't mind if I go off script a little bit, because, you know, it's sort of boring. It's a little boring. By the way, what a nice picture that is. Look at that. I'd love to watch that guy speak. Oh, boy. Let's see. How's... I try like hell to hide that ball spot, folks. I work harder. <laughs> Doesn't look bad. Hey, we're hanging in. Don't worry, you're getting the wall. Don't worry, okay? I heard some. <laughs> I had a couple of these characters in the back say, oh, he really doesn't want the wall. He just used that for campaigning. I said, are you, can you believe it? <laughs> you know, I say, every time I hear that, the wall gets 10 feet higher, you know that. Right? <laughs> but we have a very crooked media. We had a crooked candidate, too, by the way. But we have, we have a very, we have a very, very crooked media. Those were just a few of the highlights of President Trump's remarks today at CPAC. The president brought his well-known campaign-style speech to the conservative political gathering. And as you could hear, the crowd was more than pleased with what Trump had to say. After that speech, Philip Rucker of The Washington Post pointed out his presidency is basically a never-ending campaign. And although the president's approval rating sits at just 37 percent among all American voters, his approval among Republican voters stands at a solid 86 percent. Back with us, Lan Hee Chen, Jonathan Allen, Christina Bellantoni. Uh, before we break down what it means that the president acknowledged that he has a comb over, uh, I would like to uh, show you a piece of the speech that's been getting a lot of attention. It's, it's something that he used to say over and over and over again on the campaign trail, but it's something uh, that perhaps uh, we would think would mean something uh, or would be something that you would leave uh, once you became the president for all Americans. Take a look. This is called the snake. And think of it in terms of immigration. And you may love it or you may say, isn't that terrible? Take me in, O oh, tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman. And you've bitten me, heavens why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Lan Hee Chen, when the president says think of this in terms of immigration, he's essentially saying we took you in, we cared for you, and you turned around. Uh, and bit us, and many people see this as a very racist way uh, of looking at the world. How do you view it, and is this what the Republican Party should be saying? There's no distinction. E even, I mean, even if he wanted to make the claim he was talking about illegal immigration, there was no distinction there. And I think this is a continuation of the kind of rhetoric during the campaign that I think was problematic and damaging for the Republican Party and will be in the long run. I think the question is, does it matter at this point? You look at CPAC, you look at the gathering that it's become. This is not your father's CPAC anymore. This is a very different kind of gathering. And, and people that have wondered about whether the Republican Party has become the party of President Trump, I think, you know, I submit to you Exhibit A which was what you saw today, the kind of speech he gave there. The audience loved it, and that you know, suggests that this is the kind of gathering and the kind of party, unfortunately, that's moved in that direction. The question is how much of this is going to be lasting. Is this a temporary thing? Those are questions we're not going to know the answers to for some time. But using that speech and talking about immigration broadly in terms of those themes was very troubling to me as the son of immigrants. Jonathan Allen, you were at CPAC uh, with me as well this week. Do you agree with Lanhee's assessment about the different kind of atmosphere? 
Uh, absolutely. I agree with you about the atmosphere. And just to come back to something Alain, he said uh, really quickly, I think it's uh, very important that there was no distinction there. There was no distinction between legal immigration and illegal immigration, legal immigrants and illegal immigrants. There are members of the president's own family who are immigrants to this country, including his wife. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, to not hear that broadly and to not think of it as meant broadly, uh, you know, the, he gave, president gave people no reason to think of it as anything other than all immigrants. Um, but but in terms of CPAC changing, I talked to uh, uh, the Weekly Standard's deputy uh, online political uh, editor this week, uh, Jim Swift, and he said, you know, CPAC was always like a Ringling Brothers circus. Uh, now it's more like Cirque du Soleil, like a circus on acid. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I think what's interesting, uh, particularly about this year, is that this used to be a place where conservatives of different types got together and uh, debated over issues. And now what you've got is a very uh, homogenous and very sort of uh, in line group that is following Donald Trump. Trump is defining conservatism uh, much more than conservatism is de defining Trump. And he even said uh, today at CPAC, people used to ask whether I'm a conservative. And, you know, I think the answer. I'm paraphrasing here. I think the answer is yes. Uh, but but the term conservative doesn't mean what it did a year or two ago now. Now conservative sort of uh, seems to mean whatever Trump defines the Republican Party to be. Christina Bellantoni, very quickly, last word uh, to you. What is your sense of this broader discussion? And is Trump narrowing the definition of conservatism so much uh, that he is fundamentally alienating people like Lon He Chen, like Mitt Romney, like others who identify themselves differently. Sure. Well, one thing we know is that he motivated a certain type of voter that hadn't been excited to come out to the polls. You know, apologies to Mr. Chen, but, you know, for Mitt Romney, for some Republicans in the past, and enough of them showed up that that won him the presidency. So if in three years we are talking about you know, can the president still motivate that type of voter and he's still behaving this way? The answer is yes. The question is just, can the opposition motivate the types of voters who didn't feel excited enough for Hillary Clinton in particular? To